it's been uh it's been a rare rare treat uh to, to know that you uh, uh respond back to my email and stuff oh that, no that's the cool glad glad to do it you know glad to do it yeah well uh we can talk about pretty much anything that you want to talk about because i know you've been a busy guy and i and i did go and see uh that movie paint again last friday at the theater and I uh, was very, uh, very. Uh, <laughs> your role was uh, a pretty, uh, pretty cool role, I tell you. Um, I, I, I guess I, I can't make. It. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, I, I know that. Uh, um, it was, it was cut a lot. I guess everybody's part was cut to the fast editing. In other words, my scenes were there, but there were much. Because <laughs> worked by much faster than what was filmed. Uh, we spent like you know a whole day uh, almost uh, filming that that fight. Yeah, it's just ended in in one punch. But that was a long uh, involved fight with uh, uh, a dummy and uh, a hand and me and makeup and <laughs> it was like a, a huge thing, which I thought was really great. And then I watched. The fight after you, you know. <laughs> say legendary because this guy has done a lot of different movies and TV shows and he's known for a lot of memorable roles. If you remember him as Mr. Heckles in, uh, as the annoying neighbor, Mr. Heckles in, in the show Friends or as Crazy Carl and, and Billy Madison. I can even go back and remember you in uh, Armed and Dangerous as the one of the hippie security guards uh, in that role. <laughs> Yeah, Something like yeah, that, yeah, like yeah. That. Uh, that one part where that one guy said the, the world's full of assholes, or something like that, or, or the world is something, something, and everybody like <laughs> everybody like gives a weird look. And then I can also remember you in a uh, couple of scenes from uh, uh, planes, trains, and automobiles. Uh, I think yeah. the character was uh, was it Dewey? Cab right? driver. Yeah, the cab, cab driver. driver. Dewey, right? Yeah, yeah. the character uh, who was uh, for the. Um, from Armed and Dangerous? Oh, yeah, and Armed and Dangerous. And that was interesting because uh, that character, <laughs> the, the, I forgot who the, the, the director was, uh, but he, I was there. He would talk to me loud and slow. <laughs> <laughs> and he, 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 he actually, because I, I don't know why he was hanging out when I wasn't on camera. Yeah. Uh, but he assumed that they just hired somebody who talked like that and did those things. Uh, <laughs> he didn't explain that to me. I was wondering why he was talking to me so low and, 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 and loudly, but uh, at, the, at the rap party, uh, he came to me and he, he apologized and I worked for you all for like it did on on the set, and, and I said, "Yeah, that was really weird. Why?" And he said, I, "I I thought you were like you know one of these acid flashback actors who just didn't know what was going on." <laughs> uh, and then somebody told me, "No, he was acting." Oh, <laughs> but, I mean, 
he wasn't acting like that all the time, so I don't know. must have just only noticed me when I was in front of the camera. But that was very funny. Then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I apologize <laughs> for... Uh, but uh, other than that, yeah, it was a cool movie. I, I, you know, many people have seen that, like, a lot of times. Armed and Dangerous and uh, Billy Madison. Oh, yeah. People have seen that, like, you know, 50, 60 times. It's amazing. <laughs> You know, when they were kids. When they oh, were yeah. Kids. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and we're chatting with the legendary Larry Hank. I, I forgot to say the name, but I'm sure uh, people can recognize your voice and everything. And, and, and once you mention some of the credits that you've done and everything, uh, people people know. People know you. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess. I'm, you know, you're people famous. recognize me on the street, but I'm known as that guy. <laughs> hey, oh, you're that guy, man. <laughs> that guy from Billy Madison. <laughs> You're that guy from Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah and, and you're that guy in Billy Madison that did that crazy little yeah. uh, hyena, hyena laugh. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I've seen it, like like I say, 50. Some people have told me they've seen it 90 times. I guess it's weird. Yeah, it's on. It's on TV all the time. It's on TV all the time. They, they It's like they always yeah. air a lot of classic uh, Adam Sandler movies, like before he was really famous, or 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 they picked one right. that got him. So yeah, I mean, I remember that movie pretty well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, it's it's uh, an honor to be able to chat with you. This is a a rare treat because uh, I'll tell you why. Because in the last uh, the last season, now this last season that I've been doing interviews, I have done almost forty interviews. Before, since August of last year, with many different celebrities, maybe some people that you've worked with before, maybe maybe not, uh, but uh, you are number thirty nine in, in uh, interviews that I've done, and I only need two more interviews to break my record from two thousand twelve, which was twenty. So all right, well I'm glad to help you out. <laughs> yeah, I mean this is this is a rare treat, and uh, how often do you do interviews at all? Um. I, I do them only when I think something is worth, you know, uh, doing from, from my end, not, not from the, the interview, but like if, like the movie came out, so okay, yeah, I'd like people to see the movie, I'd like people sure. to see me in the movie, so yeah, you do an interview, and uh, I certainly want to work with Michael again, so I'm helping him out, uh, but uh, some, uh, in, the, in the future, I'm going to be making my own movies, and uh, so... Unless I have a movie coming out or something, there's no reason to just do an interview. Yeah. You know, I don't do it often. I just do it when there's a reason. Okay. You know, from my end to do it. Well, sure, sure. I mean, if you got, you know, I mean, it's better when you have something to promote and stuff you know, rather than not right. have anything yeah, exactly. to do. Exactly. Sure. I don't want, in other words, I don't want to waste an interview because once you do it, you know, you don't do another one with that person for for a while. Yeah. So you gotta you gotta judge, you know, and, and pick and choose. Your spots. And, I, and I, I've learned that too, you know, like if you're going to, you know, try to make sure they have something, something to promote because that way they'll say yes and then it'll work out rather than not having anything to promote. Right, right. So, exactly. well, that's that's cool. And, and you know, you've done so, so much work in the entertainment industry. I mean, it's like, I mean, I can list every character that you, you've uh, played, but we don't have enough time to do that. But a lot of people remember you from just as a character actor, more or less. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 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 and I've done some serious, well, like in Pain and Gain, that, that wasn't too funny. Uh, I started out as a comic character actor, and I started out as a, as a matter of fact, as a stand-up comedian way back in the day. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, being, uh, doing serious roles also is kind of a long way from where I started and where I aimed. Um, I wanted to be uh, just a stand-up comedian. Then I joined Second City, and I just wanted to be in Second City. I didn't want to leave. And then uh, we went to, um, a couple of us broke off and went up to San Francisco to do a committee, which was like Second City. And I wanted to stay in San Francisco uh, to do that. And then uh, everybody came down here, so I followed, and uh, I just wanted to be a, a comic actor. And my agent started sending me out for serious roles, and oh. that was a whole new field. <laughs> and now I just want to do my own movies. Oh yeah, and that's where I'm going now. Yeah, I saw I saw some of the stuff you did on YouTube and uh, some of the characters. Uh, what was this one character that's popular? Oh, Emmett. 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 Yes. Emmett. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's that's. I'm trying. Uh, I'm uh, trying to get him uh, up to speed for. Uh, 
a feature film right now. Oh, and that's, oh. that's what I'm doing right now. But yeah, I made a couple of... Uh, uh, they're actually on Vimeo. If you go to Vimeo or, or Dropbox, I guess. Um, or Dropbox, I don't know, a code. But, um, uh, yeah, a couple of his movies, Emmett Demas movies, uh, have been on the festival circuit and won a whole bunch of prizes. And So that's when I thought, okay, let's go for a feature now. I don't think the the, the ones that were in festivals are on YouTube they're on Vimeo for some reason okay. I don't remember why but yeah some uh, yeah, somebody wanted an exclusive so they picked it off <laughs> YouTube and then they went out of business so I never <laughs> haven't put them back up on YouTube yet but oh, yeah okay. uh, Emmett Sagittarius Demons is a is a character that I'm going to kind of ride for in the next five years I think so, so how did that how did you come up with the idea to do, for that character well, I know that it's very, very practical in a, in a way. I've always wanted to do character. I, I'm, I really am from like Second City. That that's really sure. the kind of humor I, I like best. I'm data driven uh, stories, and so I noticed that uh, I noticed it with women. A lot of the women actors, when they reach about thirty five or forty. All of a sudden, these uh, really good um, uh, film actors start to do mothers on TV yeah. because they can't get uh, any any jobs. Really, it's hard for a, a, and not even an older woman, but someone in middle age. Even uh, writers don't write too many really good roles. Um, at least back when I got this idea, I started to see that, you know, women, when they start to go gray in their hair, roles are really cut down, and I didn't want that to happen to me. Man, it takes a little while longer, but still, as you grow older, parts start to disappear. Yeah. So I wanted to write a character that I could grow into instead of away from. And I noticed that Charlie Chiller couldn't do the little tramp anymore. He had to do Mr. Bordeaux and older characters, which never really quite worked. He was, you know, the little tramp. But he got too old to do it. So I wanted to design a character that I could do, that I could grow into an older character. And so I came up with uh, a Don Quixote. I thought, wow, Don Quixote has always been really funny to me. I love that book. And uh, so I thought, okay, let's get a modern day Don Quixote kind of character and I called him Emmett Sagittarius he just like Don Quixote and I thought okay now no matter how old I get <laughs> I'd only be doing him better uh, so that's how I came up with the character oh that's cool to, no, like, to, so to solve an actor's problem <laughs> no, that, no, that's, that's cool uh, that's a, an interesting story to, because uh, some people who are familiar with that character probably never knew until now, if they asked you know, how it got started and, and you know, it's, it's kind of funny, I mean, the, the entertainment business has changed so much since uh, back in the day when you started. You were talking about, like, Second City. I also love, love the, the improv and all that because a lot of people don't realize, you know, prior to, like, Saturday Night Live, uh, you know, there was this thing called Second City Television, you know, like, where John Candy got started and Rick right, Moranis. Right, and, TV. Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, people, more people know about Saturday Night Live than they do about SCTV. I wonder why that is. Um, well, because SCTV, well, first of all, SCTV, they all, you know, kind of, well, hired away. But I, I think uh, Saturday Night Live is primetime television. It's, a, you know, Saturday Night NBC. And I don't think CTV was on uh, a, a big channel. I'm not sure. I watched it all the time. I, yeah. I was, you know, addicted to SC. I, uh, Saturday Night Live, it's not character driven. It's, it's politically driven and and joke driven. Yeah. Uh, and lampoon driven. <laughs> uh, I, I'm character driven. Yeah. That's what SCT was. Those were great characters. They were just funny, just, they didn't have to say uh, funny things. They said things funny, which is different. Yeah. And, and what I kind of want to know is like, uh, uh, like for like stand up comedians who uh, if you go to their show you know like like their stand up you know most stand up comedians like to swear in their in their show 
But it's, it's right. kind of funny how, like, people like Adam Sandler, like, even when you worked with him and Billy Madison, of course, he swore in that movie, but, like, to keep it clean on the NBC level, all these different people that they yeah. had, I wonder how the heck they were able to do that with so many different people that are used to, you used to hearing them swear, but they had to keep it clean. Um, <laughs> well, it's uh, willpower and, you know, the desire to <laughs> stay artistically alive. You know, they just want to be on TV. Yeah. You know, I, I, I ran into that when I was in, uh, when I was in stand-up comedian, and uh, I used to open for Woody Allen and, uh, okay. and, and Miles Davis and stuff, so I, I was doing really well, but my manager, who was the same manager as Woody's, um, I, I was, I couldn't get on television because that's all I did was I t- talk about pot and, and, oh, and okay. use curse words <laughs> uh, and stuff, and he said, you got to develop television humor. So you can get on television and become more famous. And I don't know what the hell he was talking about. Uh, you know, I, mean, I said, I, I don't write stuff. I just get up and, and talk. I kind of improvise my day. I would get up on the stage and say, well, this is what I... Uh, kind of like, in a way, kind of like uh, a dark Seinfeld kind of... Uh, yeah. They were ob- observational. I said, this is, this is what I did today, and this is what was funny, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I didn't write it. I, I would always come off the top of my head, and then if it was funny, I'd keep it in. So I, I had a great... My mind can edit really well. I don't have to write it down. I just can remember the uh, the punchline. I remember the laughs. Okay. And so I just say whatever came in my head, and that's not cool for for TV, even though the stuff was finally solidified and, and, and scripted in that I said it the same at every show, because... You know, uh, I couldn't. I couldn't write, sit down, and cross out all the uh, or edit myself uh, because that just wasn't the way that I wanted to do it. So it kept me off TV as a stand-up comedian, and that's why I went to Second City. Okay. I thought, well, what the heck, you know? <laughs> uh, and also, I was getting back back in the day. That was Lenny Bruce and stuff. I mean, you saw oh, yeah. it, or you know, I I get what happened to him. Uh, I was busted for all of his his dirty, filthy talk. I mean, he was driven off the stage, and I didn't want that to happen. But there were fewer gigs available for me because of of the cursing. So S N L uh, S S N L yeah stayed alive because they just refused to curse, and I didn't know how to not curse, or I didn't want to not curse. So I just became an actor. You know, the hell with it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll say somebody else's words. Oh, sure. Because, uh, you know. Yeah. Did, did you ever see yourself doing, like, a, a, a radio job at all? Like, being a disc jockey at all, ever? Um, no, it, it never occurred to me. Um, I, the frustration, I would imagine, I don't know, with being on the radio is you can't hear the laughs. <laughs> I, I live off the laughs. Okay. But, you know, uh, I mean, as, as, as far as stand those. I mean, what, now that I'm an actor, well, but you see, here's the difference. I, there's two different things I do. One is I remember other people's words and I say them and that's being an actor that, you know, I don't have to worry about what they mean or who won't like them or if I'm cursing or not. Somebody else's words and they've got it clear. I just remember them and do them. That's one job. But there's another job where I've got stuff in my head and that I don't censor. That stuff I want to see as it is in my head, as close as possible. I mean, there is a translation when you, you know, put a picture and start, you know, making movies and stuff. But but that I don't change, and that I'll just let, you know, appear where people want to see it. You know, so there's two different ways of getting it out there. You know, one it's somebody else's responsibility, and two I don't care I just want the people who want to see it it doesn't matter I mean I'm, I'm not that everything I do has a curse word in it that's yeah. not true at all but it's just um, I just want to the images I these funny images in my head intact and put them into films okay. and that I don't censor you yeah. know even though if there's no curse words in it I don't change it to um be on Saturday night at 11.30, you know, or whatever that, the rule applies for that. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and it kind of keeps me sane. You know, I have my own little thing, and I do something else 
for the rent and uh, because they want me to do it oh, right. because I think it's fun. You know? Oh, sure. Yeah, and, and uh, earlier we were talking about uh, the fact that you've done some serious roles as well. But uh, what do you think about like, like stand-up comedians doing serious roles? Because I've seen a, a few movies that Robin Williams has done, and I, I guess me thinking it's like, uh, well, Robin Williams, you know, him to the dance was comedy. I mean, uh, I personally don't think that that comics should be doing serious roles. They should just stick with. <laughs> they should just stick with well, doing. Who are you? Yeah. Well, well, yeah, but I mean, I, I think I think comedians should do just c- c- funny roles, like because that's it's like even yeah. Adam Sandler. You know, he did a couple serious movies, and I just like what the hell. <laughs> Um, uh, who did you just mention? Like Adam Sandler. He did like a couple serious movies like oh, Spanglish yeah, and stuff. Oh, but he was good in a, in a couple of those. Yeah. Uh, some, 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 well, it's not a question of, you know, well, I, I think you should or you shouldn't. Um, like you, Sean, I mean, you're a radio guy. Uh, you're, you're not an actor, but if I say to you, Sean, I want you to be in my movie and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a million dollars. Whether you can act or not, I think you're going to take the gig. Yeah. I guess I would. So yeah. that's <laughs> where the that's what that's all about. It has nothing to do with whether you can or should or shouldn't. Uh, it's a question of some that Sean is going to bring in a and people, and so we want those people to see our movie. We'll put Sean in it. I mean, that's those kind of judgments, and that's why I kind of had my own little bailiwick of stuff that I want to do. I don't. I don't do those things. I, I put somebody in the movie because they're going to help tell the story. And, and they're the best ones to tell the story. But uh, Hollywood and the business of, of making films is not, they don't work that way. They work a different way. It's very successful. It's highly successful. It's just that's their way. Okay. And so, you know, and uh, if they want Larry Hagen to do a serious role, and sometimes I just want to stretch. Just I mean, the first time my manager, said, uh, my my agent said, "Hey, here's a serious role. I think you'd be great in it." Um, I w- wasn't too sure to do it, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm kind of serious, and it's not going to be any laughs. I don't know, man. Uh, but they offered me enough money where, wow, this is a great way to learn if I can do it or not. And so I did it, and it was successful. I don't know exactly what role it was. That was my first serious role. Uh, but, it, you know, everybody seemed to like it. The reviews came out. I got a good review. So I have a proclivity for it, and so I, I, I've been doing it ever since. My agent, you know, sends me it, or people call and say they want me to be in it. And um, it just seemed to work out. But the other thing is, it's not a question of whether a stand-up comedian should or shouldn't be a serious actor. There's no shoulda, there's no shoulda, coulda, woulda. I mean, it's either do or don't, you know. Good old Yoda. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. I guess you could say downright, the, the sang goes, money talks, and bullshit walks, more or less, huh? Kind of like. um, it, yeah, and, and, and like, uh, did you ever see, um, oh, there's this, uh, Jerry Lewis, uh, who's really, really old school. Yeah. Uh, he, um, he did with Martin Scorsese and, uh, and De, De Niro, that, you know, that st- where he was a, a comedian, and De, uh, De Niro was a stand-up comedian. Um, I don't know, but he was great. Jerry Lewis, who was a, just a, a comic actor. Uh, character actor in all those movies he did this really straight serious role and he he, was, he killed man he was really great so you can't you know people say I never I've, I've never taken an acting course I just learned how to be, do characters through Second City in improvisation uh, so you just you never know who can do it and who can't I guess which is you know the story of anybody's job doing anything. Some people can just the geniuses at it, and <laughs> how they do that, I uh, who knows, you know. Well, obviously, you you've been able to to uh, to do it because uh, you 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 still have a career in, in the entertainment field, whether it's a big role or a small role. And uh, what I like to know is how how did uh, Michael Bay or 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 how did you audition for the part? Uh, 
Well, see, I, I, I get even more like, off my agent saying there's an, uh, I, I really don't like to audition. I don't know any actor who does really like to audition, but I, I really don't like to audition. I mean, it's just, uh, I, cause I, as you said, I've done so many roles over the years and I've auditioned so many times, you know, and, and there's a, a body of work out there that you can get and see how, how good or bad I am. <laughs> uh, so, you know, in my in in my later years, you know, I got okay already. I've auditioned enough, and I start to uh, get an attitude problem. Um, you know, geez, can't they just look at my movie and blah, blah blah? So, so I don't like to audition that much unless it's a really great role where I go, wow, I'll, I'll do anything to get that role, or they just throw so much money at, which they don't throw that much money at me <laughs> for, 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 for my bank account it is a lot of money uh, I, you know I, I'll do it but you have to audition you know if, uh, and uh, so there's okay whatever I'll, I'll, I'll audition um, so that's really um, when my agent called me about this Mike, Michael Bay uh, movie Pain and Gain I had to audition for it say who the um, who the director was he, he just said uh, I got an audition for you tomorrow and I want to do it and I turned it down like five times I just didn't want to, I just didn't want to go and then he said Michael Bay and I said yeah well great oh, okay I, li I like his movies but but he just he just I, I just auditioned to, to actually to stop my agent from calling <laughs> and uh, that's the only reason I auditioned is, and then I got it. I just went to the audition. Just I didn't think I would get it. I, I, I thought, well, my heart isn't in it, and they'll pick that up, and I won't do a good audition, so I probably won't even get it. But okay. But the role was kind of interesting, you know. That it got under my skin, and I thought, well, no, let me try to really do this. Then I auditioned, and I and I got it. So I was kind of glad because it was Michael Bay and it wasn't interesting um, but when I met Michael Bay on the set he just didn't even look at my audition tape you know you audition and they send yeah. it to the director and he said um, as soon as they turned on the tape and I saw your face I knew who you were and you had to roll <laughs> uh, so he <laughs> <laughs> wow so why couldn't you have done it because, you know, I, like I say, you know my work. Yep. So he, he watches television. You know, he, he goes to movies. So, uh, you know, that's what I... It, it wasn't even necessary. He did know my work. He just didn't know I was available or he didn't think of me. It was this, the casting agent who, you know, wanted me to audition or my agent who wanted me to audition. So that's why I do my own movies. I don't have to audition. I just yeah. go out. I save up enough money and then I just make a film short. Uh, that one. Uh, yeah, but you know, it's kind of funny because once I were so bad, I You don't think it was Billy Madison at all, the last big film that you did, that everybody uh, saw? It could, it could, no, I've been in a lot of films, uh, but they're kind of obscure, you're, you mean the last big film? Yeah, they're like, like, I've like many films, but they're just really small, some of them go straight to DVD, sure. some uh, okay. are, never even get released, I've done s several films where they never got released. Oh. For whatever reason, they ran out of money in post, or no distributor bought them, whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, I've done films, and it's just small, and you haven't seen them. You okay. know, they're just, uh, 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 like, art house films and stuff like that. Um, but I don't I don't know. I, I don't <laughs> remember. 
uh, any. The last big film that I remember I did was Escape from Alcatraz, and that was the first movie, <laughs> one of the first movies I've ever done. But what that I, was like, you know, back in the dark ages. But what I'm trying to get at is that I think it, it probably made you feel really good inside that the fact that you're, you're, you're going to be in another, you know, in a big film that people are going to see, it's going to have a big release and everything, and, and now it's like, what, ranked number one in the world and everything right now in the box office, and that has to make yeah. you feel good, at least, the, the fact that you uh, got to uh, be a part of it. Um, yeah, but, you, you know, um, and and I was in my head when I when I finally said, okay, I'm going to audition, um, and then I got it, and I realized it was Michael Bay, and uh, that it's going to be big just like it's a Michael Bay movie. But my, my take on it was, oh, great, this is going to be worldwide, hopefully it'll be number one, which I hear it is, uh, and that'll help my films. Yeah. But uh, I don't look at it as, oh boy, I'm going to get more parts in other people's <laughs> movies. That, that's not where I'm heading. Although it, it, it's going to help, and, and that's going to... See, I'm not really an actor. I, I never was going to be an actor. I never wanted to be an actor. I never dreamed of being an actor. I was always amazed at what act do, and they memorize those lines, and they sail ships, and they go with <laughs> rockets, and uh, CGI, and all that. I oh, never... Yeah. I always wanted to be a stand-up comedian, really, and to this day, that's who I am in my heart. I'm a stand-up comedian. I watch Comedy Central stand-up stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, hey, why uh, not? Yeah, so... Anything I get that's not stand up to me is like whipped cream on the on the cake. You know, <laughs> it's 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 uh, the gold ring. It's wow! How, how did that happen? I just really want to do stuff in my head. You know, oh, that's, sure. um, the, my stand up was like that, and my movies are like that, and they give me money to do it. That's really what it's all about. Uh, yeah, I, I suppose the bottom line, it's uh, you're there. But I, I, I you know, I want to you know. Uh, you know, proud of people's success. Maybe it's maybe all time. You know, you know, there's not a whole lot to do, and everybody's kind of small-minded and everything like that. Uh, there aren't many people that want to be in the acting field or a uh, stand-up comic field or whatever. Although they they did it when they were in school and everything like that, but then after they got older, they just wanted to be in the real world and got like a a job they didn't they don't enjoy and all that stuff and and myself I mean I I enjoy what I do but it's just that you know I I, I could see myself doing something more in the entertainment field like acting and stuff like that but I I don't know I mean I I guess I've never I've never really tried it but I but I just have that passion for it so I don't know <laughs> well, where, where do you where do you where are you right now? Where do you where, where does your radio station come from? I mean, your radio show come from? Where it, you it, it's uh, where I come from, a little town called Greenbush, Minnesota, which is like northern Minnesota, and it's uh, for my YouTube channel that I pro post this on every time I do an interview. And, and that's uh, where you live right now in Minnesota, and that's where this is coming from. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh well, you got to go to where the you got to go to where what you want to do is happening. Yeah, you ha you have to go to New York, or you have to go to Hollywood, or you have to go to wherever they make movies. Um, uh, I now because of digital, I don't have to do that anymore because of digital films. I can I can go with you and make my movies. <laughs> you know, you, sure. you go to the Best Buy or you, the drugstore, and you get a. A, a little camera, a little digital camera, yeah. and that's what I do. All my stuff is di is digital. You can post that, and and it's fine for the for the web. And I'm sure you can rent the camera or something like that. But if you want to be an actor, you know, you, you got to go to where it's happening. Yeah. If um, you want to be a banker, I would imagine you go to New York, or you know, you, you got to go to where it is. Yeah. They, they, it it doesn't come to you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> not only is it hard climbing the, your mountain of your bliss, it's much harder finding your mountain of bliss. <laughs> That's the real challenge. <laughs> that that took me years to figure out what I really wanted to do. Oh yeah. You know. No, I, no, I definitely hear. Uh, you know, eventually we all are bits, and and the cool thing about what I'm doing right now is. Uh, uh, just recently, the uh, my local hometown uh, found out that I was doing 
you know, interviews and stuff like that because I'm like the, I'm one of the rarest of my kind as far as, uh, I'm a young guy, I'm only 29 years old, and just recently the paper, the local paper did an article about me and my interviews and stuff like that because they thought how neat it is of somebody finally doing something different that's uh, not common in a small town, uh, somebody oh, cool. that's actually doing something yeah. different, so... I don't know, that, that, that was kind of cool to get recognized from your hometown of people that you wouldn't think would even right. care. <laughs> well, you're doing it. I mean, you, yeah. do now, you don't have to go. There is no Radio Central. <laughs> I mean, there, there actually is a, a movie central. I mean, several all over the globe and all over the United States, but there are few. Like I say, New, New York and Hollywood are the cliches, but yep. they actually do movies there. But, but radio and now digital... You can do it. You don't have to leave your your hometown. I live come from a small hometown too, Far Rockaway, Long Island, and there was nothing. I came from a very uh, non artistic family. Uh, they wanted me to be a doctor and blah blah blah. I went to college, and then from there, I just went to basically. I just went to Chicago for Second City, and then went to Hollywood because that's where it was happening. But now, if I still lived in Far Rockaway, I could make my movies in Far Rockaway. I don't have to leave. Oh, sure. I, 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 there's not the, there's not the, um, what do you call it, the support group for films, probably, in Far Rockaway that there yeah. is in Hollywood. I mean, everybody here, <laughs> and I'm talking about students uh, and, and young people, making their own films digitally. I mean, that's, you know, it's so, and that's kind of my crowd is, people under 30 who yeah. are just making their own films on, on digitally. That's who my friends are. Oh, that's Because cool. it's a support group. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, and you guys have, have to find your support your support group, or you can, uh, you know, now your hometown has figured out what you do, and they like it, so you, your hometown is your support group. They like what you do. That's what you need, you know. Positive affirmation. That's, you gotta, you, you can't just be around people who don't care what you do. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can't do it alone. You need, And then, you know, people write in and give you good feedback. Oh, yeah. That's cool, uh, too. So the, the game has changed since when I started. Oh, yeah. You know, you know digital changed everything. <laughs> Radio, too. Yep, yep. Uh, and one thing that I will tell you before we, we talk, talk about anything you, else you want before we close this interview, uh, the one cool thing about my area is that there's a town 20 miles uh, north or like, like real close to where the interstate is and everything. Uh, there's a, a familiar actor that I'm sure you know uh, named Ned Beatty who stays from, oh, yeah. from May to October. His wife is originally from a town called Carlson, Minnesota, which is only like 20 miles north from where I live, and he stays in Carlston uh, from May to October. So he has a little house over there, and uh, oh, yeah, cool. And he's been doing it since like 1999. So, and I got to meet him and do an interview with him a long time ago. And, oh, really? Oh yeah, oh yeah. This is, I mean, this is uh, one of the things that, that people love to talk about all the time because he's such a. I mean, he's 75 years old, so he's like, you know, he's he's getting up there in age, but he done so much work just like you have and, and it's just kind of cool to know that there's somebody around our area that uh, that uh, well not from our area but like you know staying in our area to kind of you know just because he likes it so <laughs> uh, yeah well that, that's uh, I think that's of, of Hollywood is everybody comes to Hollywood to make enough money to move away from Hollywood uh -huh. is basically the formula sure. uh, yeah, yeah because there's if you want to be an actor and make big movies, you know, ten pole movies and Michael Bay movies and action movies, yeah, you got to come here because here's all the equipment and the, and the supplies and the actors and the people who can do fights and chases and CGI machines and stuff. But uh, to just be a normal human person in Hollywood, it's this is a business town. Uh, you you literally try to make enough money to move somewhere where you can just have neighbors and lead a normal life, you know, go to the laundromat and drive your car and, you know, sure. gas up your car and go to the 7-Eleven. I mean, that's real life. Oh, yeah. And, and that's hard to pull because somebody like, say, Ned Beatty, you're here, you're working, you know, you're or, or you're on 
location for three months or something like that. You're living in a hotel. Uh, so the work is very hard to keep a normal life once you're actually employed. You know, the if you're making... The, that's why a lot of movie actors finally break down and do TV. TV is a nine-to-five job. It's very normal, you know? Yeah. It's in the area you drive to where the location is or the set is or the studio. At five o'clock, it's you, you punch out just like anybody else and you go home and you go to the valley and you raise your kids. Oh, sure. Uh, you know, so you can have a normal life, but if you just want to do movies, make enough money to move to Minnesota. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just a plane flight away, but you have a, a normal, and I'm sure I was just up in uh, Minnesota uh, doing a movie, as a matter of fact, oh. a friend's movie. Uh, again, it'll be low budget. It'll probably go to DVD, but it was a thing. They did a similar in Minnesota. No, we're a very small town, very small town. It was so small that most of the sets, like bars and police stations and stuff, were just given, us, uh, given to the company for free. They, they didn't charge them anything. They were just happy to have a movie being made in, in the bar, you know, so maybe the bar gets into a movie and you get a little oh, advertising. Sure. But that was a small town. Um, you know, you, you can, uh, so it was, I got a, a shot of what probably Ned realizes. It was a great little small town. I'd love to hang out there, um, you know, for a while. Maybe a great place, like they say, to raise kids. Oh, sure. That's, you know. Yeah. So, uh, like, now that we're almost uh, ready to end the interview, I, first of all, I just want to say, Thank you once again because this has been a really this has been an honor. I mean, I feel happy we were back with you and everything because you're a very Just because he, you know, we, we get we got two actors uh, just recently who uh, have done recent things on TV. Uh, Richard Hurd, who was my last guest, uh, uh, could be seen uh, even on the reruns of the Betty White's uh, Author Rockers. He does a couple. He does a few skits here and there and a few episodes, uh, which I think is very hilarious. And and uh, now with Larry Hankin being a part of the uh, Pain and Gain movie that uh, just came out not too long ago. I think it's really, really cool to to know that uh, that all this stuff is happening. I mean, even if they're not big actors like they used to be back in the day, uh, to be able to come on the show, uh, on my show, which I'm just it's just me, you know, I'm just all, you know, I'm just doing this for free, you know. Once again, I'll I'll say that, but uh, to be able to come on and and, t and share your story and and talk about your life and your career, I think it's really, really cool. Uh, and the fact that you were, you know, especially if you did something currently, uh, I think that's really cool. Uh, something that people know and people because I saw the movie last Friday you know, well as well this is on <laughs> uh, April 30th we're recording this but uh, last Friday anyway uh, 
I went to Grand Forks. With, well, everybody knows went to Grand Forks with my buddies, and and we uh, watched that movie, and it was uh, it was definitely good. I, I suggest everybody goes out and see Pan again if you haven't yet, and uh, uh, not just because of the Rock. A lot of people like want to go see it because of the Rock, and it's like the Rock is great, but the Rock you know will always be great in whatever he does, you know, whether it's wrestling or whether it's movies or whatever, you know, he, he has he has what it takes, but, and Mark Wahlberg's a great actor too, but, but don't just see it because of them, see it because you want to see it, you want to you want to learn about the story, the real story about uh, where it all kind of originated from, and, uh, and just watch the whole thing, it's a uh, it's a very long movie, it's over two hours long, uh, it has a lot of good parts, some, some filthy parts too, some some weird parts, of course, but uh, and maybe some parts you wouldn't really expect in a movie like that, but uh, it's still a good movie anyway, so I'm Frankie Slauson, and we'll see you next time for another great Frankie Slauson Show interview. Bye-bye.